Hello everyone and welcome back to Coffee Break. Right now I'm here with Dr. Seva McGuire. Uh, she's graciously come down here to come speak to us today so we can ask you a few questions. Um, so let's just start off with uh, just saying some things about yourself, who you are, experience, where you're from. Wonderful. First let me say Mason, thank you so much for inviting me. Mm -hmm. Ever since I visited this studio last year mm -hmm. when I was here for my interviews, mm -hmm. I was incredibly impressed with <laughs> the work that you're doing here. And throughout the summer, I've seen you all working uh, during school <laughs> committee meetings and giving up your time. And I want you to know how impressed that I am as a new superintendent coming into a school district that has so much to offer. <laughs> and so I can much. see that um, right away. And so about myself, I'm a career educator. This is my 30th year. Mm -hmm. um, my first year as a superintendent, I spent uh, the majority of my career in the Brockton Public Schools as a as a, I'm most proud of, a teacher, mm -hmm. um, a school leader, a principal, an, a, an associate principal, a principal, uh, an executive director for what that means of the mm -hmm. elementary schools, a chief academic officer, ending with an assistant superintendent. And I became really excited when I saw that the Dartmouth superintendency was open mm -hmm. and right away started researching the community and could see that there were a lot of things about the district, mm -hmm. the Dartmouth community that were attractive to me as uh, a new superintendent. Mm -hmm. Well, that's wonderful. We're yes. so glad to have yes, you. Yes, I'm excited to be here. Thank <laughs> you. Um, so are you excited to begin your role as I'm superintendent? I'm super excited to be here and um, I officially started July 1 and have been taking my time to get to know those in the community including yourselves <laughs> having the opportunity to talk to you during school committee meetings and again getting a sense of your excitement about the role that you have here in the Dartmouth schools and I'm excited to see what is to come because tonight's the football game, so I'm super excited <laughs> to go and see what that's all about. I've gotten a chance to see the band practice. Mm. Um, I'm looking forward. I know there's a football, there's actually a girls' soccer game this afternoon uh, that I'm looking to, to forward to seeing and um, looking to just learn much more about the district. And now that the students are, are back, um, even though it's been kind of a tough couple of days, <laughs> I've been able to visit classrooms and I'm excited to see what this year is going to bring. That's wonderful. So uh, we also just wanted to get like kind of the gist of what do you plan to do to improve students' experiences here at Dartmouth Schools? Yeah. I, I love that question. Um, I think my first priority is to get to know the district itself and mm -hmm. what the experiences are here for mm -hmm. students. So part of my plan and my entry planning is to talk with students and to hear what experiences that are available and maybe some that folks or students are looking forward to adding in this yeah. school district. Um, yeah. I know one of the things that I'm interested in is to see what kind, I know that at the high school there's lots of opportunity for after school programs, there are lots of clubs here, there may be some that we might want to look at adding, so I look forward to getting to know our students. Um, I'm also looking at the earlier grades and seeing what kind of opportunities we have because one thing that we always need to be thinking about is providing opportunities for our youngest students so that they can see themselves at the high school. Um, we want younger students to see that there are lots of opportunities for them at Dartmouth High School and that starts at very young ages. Yeah, of course, you know, it's always so important to, you know, let students' voices be heard. So, yes. Because, you know, obviously they're the ones that go to the schools and are here every day, so it's important that, you know, they're heard. I, and last year when I was here interviewing, I had the opportunity to sit with the student advisory group, and I was, again, incredibly impressed with what they shared with me. Um, and I'm more, I'm much uh, more interested in listening to this year's group, and I've talked to Mr. Shea about creating another advisory group that we'll be able to meet with throughout the year. I'll be doing a student survey here at Dartmouth High School. I definitely am seeking feedback from the students because it is the student experience that we as adults need to learn from. Of course, yeah, thank you so much. Yes. Um, so we also wanted to ask, you know, what experience do you have being a superintendent uh, or like a, just a teacher or just in education? In that, that's, again, another great question. I said at the beginning I've had uh, multiple experiences in Brockton and I will always say the most, ex the most important experience I've had is that of a teacher, <laughs> right? Because as a superintendent, you need to always be thinking about the impact that decisions that you're making are having on the educators out in our schools 
who are the ones that are interacting on a daily basis with our students. Mm -hmm. um, so that role is one that I value, uh, that I do my best as a superintendent to think about through the eyes of a teacher, how is this going to impact a teacher and how will that in turn impact students. Um, as far as experience as a superintendent, I've had multiple district level roles um, in Brockton, which is a, you know, not a big city, but it's obviously a little bit larger than Dartmouth. Mm -hmm. um, so I've had great experience. Um, I've never been a superintendent. Mm -hmm. I've been a superintendent for two and a half months. Oh, July, August, yeah, well, about two and a half months now. Mm -hmm. And so far I'm loving it, but like everything I say, I'm a lifelong learner. Mm -hmm. I think we should all be. And so I consider this year uh, a, a learning experience mm -hmm. as well as an action-based experience. Of course. So, so far it's been wonderful. That's awesome, that's amazing. <laughs> um, so how do you feel about Dartmouth so far? Love it, I love Dartmouth. <laughs> um, I feel right at home here, let me say from the first minute, even e interviewing here last year, <laughs> um, leaving that interview process after having spent the day here in the district, uh, I had a real sense that this was a community that I felt a, a sense of belonging uh, and it has not disappointed the first few months. As I said, I've spent time in the community really getting to know folks on an informal basis so that when we opened the door doors this week mm -hmm. and we started to face the challenges that inevitably come, like the weather, um, that we'd be able to work together to kind of get through some of those challenges. But it's been a wonderful experience. As I said, I'm looking forward uh, to being out in the community this evening and getting that sense of Dartmouth pride in action. All right, that's amazing. So next up, uh, I gathered some questions from members of our community, parents, uh, fellow students, uh, teachers, just that they wanted to ask you. Um, and one of the ones that did come up um, was, what do you plan to do to get students involved in uh, after school programs or other stuff outside of just normal school hours? Well, I, again, I. I talked a little bit about this already. I think it's important to start early. Mm -hmm. And so I am still in sort of, I'm gonna call it the investigative um, process mm -hmm. of seeing what exactly do we have here in Dartmouth and how can we expand, improve. Um, one thing that I say to people all the time is Dartmouth is a wonderful place. There are great things happening here, but if you're not moving forward, then you can be moving backwards. So mm -hmm. we have to be looking forward and seeing uh, what kind of opportunities are here, as I said, for the students in younger grades um, so that they can see that there's a trajectory for them from primary to intermediate to high school and that that's all connected. So looking, and I love listening to Mr. Shea saying school doesn't end at, what, what time is the bell here? Is uh, that two or three. Two, <laughs> and, and, I, and I've been here uh, after that bell is rung and I can see there's lots happening here. <laughs> and I'm excited about that, but I'm also looking forward to seeing if, if there's something else that we can be doing to encourage even more student participation. That's wonderful. Um, you know, after school programs have always been a comfort to me to sort of find, you know, what things that I like or just, you know, go in deeper on the hobbies that I enjoy. And so I'm really happy that that's being Yes, you know, that's, upon. that's um, part of my prior life. Mm -hmm. um, in one of my district roles, I was actually responsible for uh, coordinate, developing, coordinating, and implementing after school and summer programs for, mm -hmm. for Brockton. So mm -hmm. that's something that I was able to carry over into my role as a principal where we added many after school and enrichment programs for the students in, in the school that I was the principal. Things like music, things like plays, um, certainly yoga, uh, arts and crafts, all of these things that we wanted our students to experience. And we were able to add that right into the school day. Mm -hmm. Well, that's wonderful. Um, so this next question came from another student. Um, they just sort of wanted to know, how do you feel about banning books or like, like the practices kind of going on recently where some um, governments or districts will be banning books based on certain subjects. Um, they just want to know how do you feel on that topic? Yeah, I mean, that's a timely question. Uh, I actually just met with, um, with leadership here at the high school to talk about that. Uh, some things have come up at school committee around some concerns about book titles. And 
in my feeling about book banning and censorship is I don't support book banning. I don't support censorship. But what do I do support is ensuring that the, the literature that we're introducing to our students and we're supporting has purpose, that we know why we're using certain books with students. We're able to articulate that clearly and that we can tie it back to our state standards and ultimately be able to talk clearly with our students and our families about why it is that this title is an important part of a student's learning experience. Mm -hmm. Of course. Well, thank you so much for your answer on that. That is a very you know, important thing yes. that some people wanted to get across. So thank you so much. Yes. Um, now, our final question for you today is one that has been talked about a lot. <laughs> um, uh, it has obviously been a very hot week here in um, Massachusetts. And so people wanted to know, do you see any sort of improvements coming to any of the buildings, including air conditioning or other you know, just general improvements we can do to the schools? You know, I so appreciate that question um, because you asked me about being a first, uh, how long I've been a superintendent. I've mm -hmm. been a superintendent for two and a half months. The last two days were the hardest days, <laughs> right? Because yeah. I understand that there is concern. I take that very seriously. I'm always concerned first and foremost for the health and safety of our staff and students. Um, I also thought about this and, and certainly conferred with other superintendents. So I, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to address this because mm -hmm. I want students here to know that I want you all to be comfortable. I want families to know that's important to me. Um, and I also recognize that a week and a half from now we could have tough weather again. Mm -hmm. And if we continue to close school, we could find ourselves in a situation where in June we're dealing with the same weather and we're closing schools again. So our job is to make sure that we're doing everything within our power, within our sort of scope of, of authority to make sure that our students have, we've delivered water, we're you know, asking, certainly talking to our teachers, our leaders, our educators, our students about staying calm, doing the, keeping shades down, fans, things like that. Now, and I'm also going to tell you that I believe in air conditioning, <laughs> um, and I really hope to have some conversations with folks in the district about ways that we can at least create some more cooling spaces mm. for, for our students and our educators. I think that's really important, and, and I'll be working toward having those discussions. So yes, I think AC is important. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much yes. for that. We all know we need something we to you know, need cool something. us all off. That's this, absolutely true. Especially in weeks I like know this. I do, right. Yeah. So it's been my goal to spend time in schools and to really see what our students and our educators are experiencing. And I've, I've never taught or worked in a school that has air conditioning. Mm -hmm. So I certainly feel that um, you know, that I have a, a good understanding of the impact that has on our students and our, our educators trying to, to keep learning moving forward. It is not easy. It has a real impact. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show today. Yep. Unfortunately, we have come to the end of our oh, time for our break. Oh, that was quick. Thank <laughs> you so much. Yeah, uh, I want to thank you again, Dr. Sabre McGuire, for yep. coming on. I want to thank um, you for having me. you wonderful. Thank you so yes, much. Yes, and thank you to your whole team for having me. All right, well, thank you so much. Yes, great. Wonderful. Thanks so much. And have me back. <laughs>